what is the constitution of this divine order for God to begin to unfold new things? God made man in his own image and in his own likeness. God desires to tabernacle with man and do all that he wants to do with man. Nothing else. Not with beasts. Not with anybody else. Not with plants. Not with any of his creation. God intends to do everything he wants to do with man. And that's why man is special. He will give man full attention. Praise the Lord. And the awareness of giving man full attention has to be really done on us. Because when it is done on us, that God is interested in us, then maybe the way we walk as an unimportant person, you know when somebody is unimportant, you are moving on the road, you see yourself as an unimportant person, you don't see any special thing about yourself. That's not the way God is looking at you. God is looking at you with real attention. Don't forget, he told the Israelites that he wanted to make them nations of priests. It was, not, it was not Levi he was looking at. I hope we know that. He wanted to make the whole of Israel nation of what? Priests. But when there, is a, when there was a violation of that order, Levi became the only tribe that was made the nation of priests. And still now, God still intends to make everyone when I say everyone, means everyone a priest. Everyone that comes to know him as a priest. This is divine order. And in divine order, we must bear burdens. Say burdens. The, the bearing of burdens is what qualifies us into the entry, each entry of the new thing. The bearing of burdens. And what burdens are we bearing? The burdens of the Lord. Praise the Lord. God has a burden. God has a burden. The burden of his word. A people must bear the burden of his word. A people must position themselves as ones who would accomplish his word. That's bearing the burden of his word. Burden is something that, the meaning of burden in simple language is that something you are concerned with. Some, if, you, if you have a trouble, maybe something happened to you, you say, I have this burden in my heart. Because you are bearing a burden. That burden, as God is putting an attention on us, God expects us to bear his burden. Praise the Lord. The reason is because he's going somewhere. He's going somewhere with that burden. Without the bearing of the body, there can be no entering into new domains. There can be no expansion. There can be no entry into new horizon. And that is the duty for Christians. That is the duty for every one of us. Where we find our place in bearing the burdens of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know many things that have happened in the organized church system is that people initially with so much zeal, they start bearing the burden of God. At some point, they start bearing their own uh, body. They start bearing their own body. I was uh, reading on the social media the other day. A man won a lottery of, uh, a, they say a pastor in a church won a lottery of some, uh, some money. He quickly abandoned uh, the pastoral service. He quickly appeared on the pastoral service and began to, he said, well, the reason why he went into the pastoral service is to, to, make to make money. He started bearing his own body. He has told God, God, you're on your own with your own body. Let me go my way. That is maybe on an extreme case, but for us, there are little, little ways where we bear our own body when God is positioning us for his body. Everything that God has equipped us with Everything, when I say everything, everything that we have been equipped, even if it's a smiling face and a beautiful face that we have been equipped with, is to bear God's body. Hallelujah. You know, when you, when you go for an interview, when you go for an interview, 
Very pretty people, handsome people, bright smile and bright countenance are, is, are more easily to get a job than a very ugly person. Oh, you don't believe that? I'm telling you. I remember we were trying to uh, uh, employ a front desk officer, a receptionist, and uh, a lot of, even there's somebody who came very, very intelligent, smart. But when you compare the face with another one, you say, ah, people feel wrong, come out, and they don't go come. Everything that we have been gifted with, everything, when I say everything, I mean everything, is for the glorification of God. Even if we have been gifted with ugly faces, it's for the glorification of God. Hallelujah. This burden bearing is the estate of the priests. It has got to do with the tabernacle. It is the bearing of the ark upon the shoulders. Hallelujah. That's the body. That's all that is required. That is the criteria for moving forward. That there are priests who have submitted their shoulders to bear bodies. And what burden are they bearing? The burden of the ark. The burden of God. Jesus said something in Matthew. And let's read it. Matthew 11 Verse 28, we are talking about the things that we make God do new things. The things that we spur him to do new things. When God finds a people who bears his body, new things will not cease from their congregation. When God finds those people, new things will not cease. Hallelujah. He had men like Moses for new things to spring forth. He had men like Joshua who had people to bear their body. And in a generation, you don't have somebody who can take responsibility to bear his body. The people are stagnant for many years. Hallelujah. In Matthew 11, from verse 28, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's one statement. The next statement Take my yoke upon you. Normally, yokes are, on, are used in relation to beasts. Beasts of bodies. That's why yoke are used. Yoke are not used for, yoke are used when they are talking about bodies. Beasts of bodies. He says, take my yoke. That means God is saying, tie yourself. Be ready to carry my load. Be ready to carry my weight. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my body is light. This. Remember we read the first scripture that says God says he's focusing his attention and he will give us what? Rest. He will give us rest. When the priest, so if there are sown burdens, there are burdens that we bear, God has already said, see, listen, 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 listen. let's discuss together. Let's exchange, let's exchange burdens. That burden you are carrying, burdens of worry, burdens of trouble, burdens that have been infused by the enemy, all those kind of burdens, let's exchange the burden. Take, 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 give me that burden, I'm going to handle it. Take my burden. Take my body, take my ministry, take my service as a priest, take my, take my, 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 the things I want you to do in my house, take my, take my, take my everything, my concerns, take it. When we begin to take it, there is a movement of the camp. When Israel, I'm, I, I'm not opening scriptures every moment because I want us to be fast, because Lakon will tell me that my time is up. Praise the Lord. When the children of Israel were moving, the people bearing the ark, they are in the front. Isn't it? They are the one that breaks ground. When their feet came to Jordan River, immediately their feet came into Jordan. What happened to Jordan River? It separates. It separates because they are body bearers. And they are not only body bearers, they are bearing the bodies of the Lord. God will never forget us when we bear his body. This is truth. Let the enemy not take it away from us. Whether burden of evangelism, 
whether burden of giving in the church, whether burdens of, of teaching children, whether burdens of even bringing your children up in the way of the Lord, every burden that is of the Lord, as we bear it, God will never forget us. Let this be inscribed in us and very deep. Even if you cannot do any other thing else and you are bearing the burden of the Lord, God will make a way. God will make a way in the wilderness. Abundant flow in the desert. And we shall, it shall spring forth. We shall know it, say it, the Lord of hosts. God is the one that said it. He will begin to cause waters to spring forth. Out of, out of the deserts. Uncommon things will begin to happen to us. Very uncommon things. Sometimes we see some brethren, we say, ah, God is always prospering this brother. Then you look at the brother, you say, there's nothing really, really so spectacular in his life that is different from my life. Go and check very well. Praise the Lord. There are burdens he's bearing. Some of us, when those burdens are placed on our shoulders, we almost break. But God we multiply us. God will prosper us as we bear his burdens. Hallelujah. Now, if we turn our Bibles to, so, the appropriate place, the appropriate place to be situated in the domain to bear his burden. You know I spoke about domain. When when we read Genesis chapter 1, the first few verses is expressive of domains. Light is a domain. I hope you know that. Light is a domain. It's a sphere. The earth is a sphere. There are domains in domain. The earth is a sphere. Light is a sphere. All of these are sphere. Before, if you began to read down into Genesis, you begin to talk about the contents of the domains. But first... If you must have dominion, you must have dominion in these realms of domains. In the realms of light, you must have dominion. Hallelujah. Because the angel also, uh, uh, Satan also exhibits himself as an angel of, uh, so we must have dominion in that domain. When we have dominion in that domain, this is the evolving expression of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. When God's people begin to have dominion in domains. They begin to bring the, the powers of God that be to bear upon situations, upon matters, and upon lives. Hallelujah. This, this place where people must stand at every time, this place where they must stand, must be in the holy place. Hallelujah. He must be in the holy place. That's why before the, before the ark is born upon the shoulders of men, they must be sanctified. Hallelujah. They must be sanctified. Let me read a scripture on that. Hallelujah. They must be sanctified. Means they must be separated. Before they can bear the ark, the priest that bear the ark must be separated. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. There must be a people, there must be a people Hallelujah. I hope I can get that scripture, but let's just read Joshua chapter Praise the Lord. Anyway, I can't get it, but we can get it. The priests must be sanctified. They must be separated. They must be prepared for the bearing of the ark. And the ark is born upon where? Their shoulders. The ark is born upon their shoulders with staffs. That staff that staff, that staff, you cannot see that staff if you are not in the holy place. Hello. If the ark is keeping, you cannot see. What does that mean? What it means is that if you are not in the holy place, 
you cannot see the reason to bear burdens. And that's one of the prayers we're going to pray. That God will open our eyes in the holy place that we might see the staffs that bears the tabernacle. I mean, that bears the ark. Let's read the scripture. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 8 from verse 5 to 9. And I read. God, first of all, before I read this, let's get something very clear. And let it get imprinted in our spirit. All of this talk that we are talking about is that God will be with us at all times to be able to move forward, to be able to accomplish his cause, and to be able to accomplish his purpose. In, 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 in 1 Kings chapter 8 from verse 5 to 9, it says, And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be told nor numbered for multitude. And the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto his place, unto the oracle of the house, to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubims spread forth their two wings over the place of the ark. And the cherubims covered the ark and the staffs thereof above. The staffs are very important. Then he went further. And they drew out the staffs that the ends of the staffs were seen the ends of the staff were seen hallelujah that the ends of the staff were seen out in the holy place before the oracle and they were not seen without. Understand that. In the holy place you'll be able to see the need for body bearing. In the holy place so, if you are not in the holy place, if we are not in the holy place with the dedication, what is the dedication? What happens? What are the activities of the holy place? The activities of the holy place is that we are enduring God every day, desiring to see a new thing by the trimming of the candle lights, participating in the place of worship, and beginning to shoo from the, begin to partake of the, of the bread of his presence. Hallelujah. That's the holy place. Those are the activities of the holy place. We partake of the bread of his presence. That is, we are communing with God. It's not in a backsliding life. It's not in a backsliding. It's not in a life that does not have a conscience towards God. It's not in a life that treats God's matters carelessly. It's not in a life that treats God's matters secondary. But it is in a, in a people who have desired, as God has placed an attention upon them, full attention, they also are committed to God. Hallelujah. That's the holy place. And that's why in Revelation chapter 11, he says, don't mention, don't measure the court. Don't measure the earth. It's inconsequential. In the matters of bearing the body, don't forget, in the matters of bearing the body of God, we must see the staffs. We must see the staffs. And the staffs cannot be seen. Before you bear the body, won't you carry the staffs? The body is not to be on beasts. Delegated to beasts. Delegated, the burden is not to be on inconsequential matters. For when the burdens are placed on top of beasts, there are casualties. Hallelujah. The burdens are not, it's, it's, it's outside due order to put the burdens, the ark on the beasts. No matter how beautiful the cat may look, no matter how spectacular. So there must, it must be on the shoulders of men that are created in the image of God, not on beasts. Praise the Lord. So if somebody is in the outer court, today the person lives in sin, tomorrow he rises up, next tomorrow uh, the person is a trickster, uh, the person is a, a GPT, what do they call G GPT, uh, man, and all manner of things, you, you cannot see. You cannot see. The stars. No matter how tall you are. Because the body, the body is in the resting place in the holiest of all. So the flashes, the flashes of the stars that we see, the flashes of the stars that we see, brings us and progresses us into the holiest of all. That's what progresses us there. So when the high priest comes into, when the high priest immediately comes into the, into the holy place, and he's standing, he sees the staff. And don't forget, it's only priests that come in this domain. He sees the staff. May we be a people who sees the staffs at all times. Praise the Lord. Let's turn our Bibles to 
Revelation 21 and read this scripture for the purposes of reinforcing what we have said. Revelation 21. And I heard a great voice of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and it will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor cry, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are what? You know, there are, some, there are some lasting experiences in our lives. Lasting experience means a yoke that we bear that can be so destructive. When I say destructive, very destructive. You can't do anything else. Sometimes you can bear a yoke for a yoke of not meeting an expectation and desire for years. Sometimes for 20 years, sometimes for 15, sometimes for five years. There is a solution. The solution, as we, as we cast our, because when, at any time that we bear yokes, what happens to us is that we constantly keep praying, isn't it? Because when we are praying about that yoke, we are laying it, we are laying it on uh, before the Lord, isn't it? We are casting that the burden before the Lord. But one antidote we don't we don't take is take as we are casting the body, we are taking the burdens of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are taking the burdens of God. I want to just. Uh, uh, I remember when Ch Chibuna was believing God for a child for so long, for so many years. I had to mention his name so that he brings the message a little clearer to us. But you see this brother. Everywhere he's going, he's doing mission work, he's moving everywhere. And all, he, this has, he has experienced this for years. Sometimes when he's doing all these things, he's praying for people. He's even praying for widows. I mean, I mean he's praying for uh, people who do not have fruit of the womb. He's, he's, he's moving on. And God blessed him with what? A child after so many years. There is an antidote. The antidote is because while the yoke is there, the enemy intends to distract us. Praise the Lord. He intends to distract us. And that can overpower us. Do you know, it happens to me, and I believe it happens to many of us, when there is a major challenge, your spirit just comes down. You can hardly do it. In fact, sometimes you can hardly pray. I'm talking about the practicality. You can hardly pray. Sometimes you pray and pray and you get tired. It is in that estate there is a, that we should begin to ask God for strength to press in. Hallelujah. It's an antidote. We begin to ask God for strength to press in. That time where the battle is the toughest. Because God will do a new thing. Hallelujah. And that heart of expectation must keep on with us. Hallelujah. 